Hey guys, what's up? It's Apple Critics from AppleCritics.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the latest and greatest watchOS 7, which Apple announced earlier today. And Apple showed a slew of new features. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you watchOS 7 Beta 1 uh, for developers. So first off, it's compatible with Watch Series 3, Watch Series 4, and Watch Series 5. And now the final release for watchOS 7 will be in the fall, so that could be late September, early October, or maybe later October. It all depends when Apple is planning to launch the Watch Series 6 along with watchOS 7. Now the overall size of this update uh, was about a gigabyte, so that wasn't too bad, but the only bad part about this is that you have to be sure that you wanna have watchOS 7 on your Apple Watch. So I'm saying that because you can't downgrade whatsoever. Uh, so there's no way to downgrade once you're on watchOS 7. Uh, and the only way uh, to downgrade is that you actually have to go to Apple uh, and then they will go ahead and downgrade it. Because once again, this is specifically made for developers and that is the main purpose of this particular software. So you have to have developer access in order to do it. And you can't just downgrade and upgrade like it's an iOS software. This is watchOS and this is a completely different ball game. Now what we can do is just go into settings and then we can go into general and then about and if we scroll down you're going to see that we're on watch OS 7 and that particular build number is 18R5310A. Uh, so A is for alpha so that means that there will be a lot of bugs and it's not really a stable update just yet so you sh probably shouldn't be using this as a daily driver uh, just yet. So once again A means uh, alpha and not as stable as let's say an, an E uh, build number which is basically the finalized version. Uh, so that is something to note for sure. Now a new feature under the settings app would be the overall uh, battery health. So what we can do is just go into settings and then battery. And then we can see all the information about our battery. So you can see currently we're at 99% uh, and it was last charged to 100% two hours ago. And then we can actually see that there's a new feature right here. So we have the battery health feature. So uh, we can just tap on the battery health. It's basically the same as the battery health that we have on the iPad and the iPhone and any iDevice for that matter. So we can just simply tap on it now. And now we can see the maximum capacity of it. So we can see uh, the maximum capacity is 100%. Uh, so that is some definitely some good news. So that means that's the age of the battery. So the more times you charge it, the worse the battery gets. So uh, I was actually expecting it to be a lot worse. But my Apple Watch Series 4 that I bought uh, in September 2018 is still at 100% battery life. So that's really good because once again, normally the more charges you do to a lithium ion battery, the worse the battery gets, and then it will have an inability to hold a charge. So maybe it would have a 90% maximum capacity. Uh, so I'm just glad it's at 100. So that means it's basically good as new. So uh, you can have optimized battery charging. Uh, so that would just actually reduce the battery aging. So your Apple Watch uh, learns from your daily charging routine. So then it will just be able to accommodate to it. And then it will finish charging uh, after it's passed 80%. And then it will just go ahead and charge all the way to 100, depending on your use. So an example would be if you normally put your uh, Apple Watch on the charger at 10 p.m and then you wake up at 6 a.m., it'll charge from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. 80%, and then it'll uh, do the remaining 20%, maybe between 5.30 uh, and 6 a.m. So that is what that means for the battery health. So it's very important to take a look and just analyze how your overall battery health on your Apple Watch is. Uh, now, obviously, if you use your Apple Watch a lot, then it will begin to deteriorate. But if you use it every now and then, then uh, it would... Uh, be at the maximum capacity just like mine. So uh, that is just very interesting. I want to see a comment down below of your overall battery health. Taking a look at the watch face, we can add some new watch faces uh, that Apple just put in watchOS 7. So what we can do is just go on over to new, hit that plus sign, and the new watch face is a Chronograph Pro. Uh, so we can just go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, so we can just simply tap on it. And now it is our new Apple watch face. This is new to watchOS 7 and it looks relatively good. And also has that tachymeter uh, right there. So that is a new feature as well. Now we can adjust it just by simply holding down on it and then pressing on edit. Uh, so when we press on edit, we can change uh, the particular functions just by using this dial right here. As uh, so you can change the time scale and then you can just swipe on over to the right to just change a the color. Then you can just use the dial right here. And then you can just move on over to the complications, which is very, very new. And that's a new feature. So the complication allows you to just change the corners of it. So what we can do is just simply tap here 
and then you can have the corner of it uh, be, let's say, for example, uh, it could be a rain, it could be walkie-talkie. Uh, we can see that there's a lot of new uh, different features. So we have the sleep one right here, which I will take a look at a little further uh, in this video, but you can see that there's different functions for uh, each particular corner. So we can look and see that there's a bunch of them. So let's say, for example, we make uh, the top piece be battery. And I'll just show you your battery there. Then you can just change all the complications to whichever shortcut you want. So maybe workout right here. So you can see it's really unique in that way. And I like what it has to offer. Now, some of the new features as complications includes the camera remote. Uh, so you can just add the camera remote right here. There's also moon phases and other shortcuts. Uh, and there's the sleep and also the world clocks as well. So those are the new complications that have been added, uh, which is definitely a graceful feature. Now we can also have multiple complications from the same app with a different developer. Uh, so that's another unique feature as well. And then we have the ability to create our own watch face using multiple complications from the same app. So uh, it's really interesting that we can just uh, create all these new complications and just personalize the Apple Watch just that much more, uh, which gives us some more usability and overall functionality. Now we do have the ability to just press and hold, and then you're gonna see that there's a share button right here. And you're probably wondering what the share button means. So you can tap on that share button, and then what it allows us to do is actually share the Apple Watch face to our friends. Uh, so we have the create message, and you can just add a contact right there. And we can go ahead and share that particular watch face and just go ahead and send it. So that's really unique, and it's just gonna give a more social aspect to the Apple Watch and make more people wanna use the Apple Watch, and just gives you another social reason to uh, bond with your friends that have the Apple Watch by sharing watch faces that, that you can customize. Now taking a look at the Apple Watch app, you can see that we have all these new watch faces in watchOS that include uh, Chronograph Pro, uh, which I just mentioned, and then you can see that there's a bunch of different uh, watch faces. Uh, then there's also the uh, extra large watch face right at the bottom, so we have that there. So it's really interesting that we have some more integrations and you can just search for all these new watch faces uh, in the iPhone, and it's a really decent user interface to take a look at. Now we can also take a look at the complications right here. So we can just add the complications from the Apple Watch app on your iPhone as well. Uh, so that's also a unique way to uh, integrate it. Now if we scroll all the way down until we see sleep right here, we can just simply tap on it. And now it says that we can now use the Apple Watch uh, to track how long you sleep and wake up with an alarm on your wrist and the display dims and locks itself at bedtime so you won't uh, wake up at night. So we have all that. So you can just set up sleep in uh, the health app. And then you can see we have all this information. So we have the sleep schedule. So the iPhone can help you uh, get to bed on time. With the sleep schedule, we have the sleep mode. So do not disturb. There's also this wind down feature that uh, they talked about in the keynote. So you can just take some time to slow down uh, before bed. And then uh, you can just have a lock screen on your iPhone as well. So the Apple Watch can also uh, track your sleep and uh, you can have it wake up uh, silent or have that haptic feedback. Uh, so that's really unique. So we have all this information here. So we can also set a sleep goal as well. So that's really unique that Apple brought the sleep goal as well. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust it uh, and just uh, make sure that we have a sleep goal in mind. And we can also set up the first schedule uh, for the sleep goal. So we have uh, all this information here. So maybe we wanna go to bed by 10 p.m. and wake up at 6 a.m. Uh, so that's a solid eight hours. We have the wake up alarm, we have the sound, and then we have the volume and then the snooze right there. Uh, so you just go ahead and add it uh, for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and maybe uh, Saturday as well. So you can just add that particular sleep schedule and then you can go ahead and hit next. And then we have the sleep mode. So the sleep mode uh, will go ahead and simplify your lock screen uh, at your scheduled bedtime. So we can just uh, go ahead and uh, skip it and we can track it with the Apple Watch now. So once we have uh, synced it with the Apple Watch, we can go ahead and enable it. And then we have uh, our particular sleep schedule here right now. Uh, so we can go ahead and configure it. So now we would be able to have all the data for our particular sleep. Uh, so we have all this information right here. And this is really unique. So that is why the Apple Watch has better integration than the actual iPhone uh, because you have it on your wrist. And we'll use machine learning models uh, to see when your wrist is moving or when there's uh, any movement uh, on your wrist that would be able to notify whether you're sleeping well uh, or if you're not sleeping at all. So that's really unique. So now what we can do is just take a look at the sleep options uh, on our Apple Watch. So we can just go ahead and go to the sleep. Uh, so there's a sleep icon. 
and now we can go ahead and just uh, set the bedtime and set the wake up and we have the full schedule right here as well so we can go ahead and set it up and we can just add another schedule and it says some days are unscheduled we have the sleep goal and we have the wind down feature which basically eliminates all your notifications and everything like that so that it will uh, put you into a sleep uh, state now there is the noise app and with the noise, you can check the nearby sounds and just see if there's any uh, extra loud sounds that's above the decibel limit, uh, which could potentially cause damage to your hearing. So you can just enable it and then it will just be able to measure the current sound. So you can see it's saying uh, how many decibels uh, currently. Uh, so we have 64 decibels and anything over 100 uh, or at least over 80 is just uh, somewhat concerning. So you can see that a long term sound exposure can affect your hearing. Uh, so what you can do is actually just go into settings and then we can go into noise. And then we have environmental sound and measurements on, and then you have the noise notifications as well, that it's over 90 decibels you get a notification. So we have that right there. So that is what the noise app allows you to do. Now we can take a look at the fitness app. So what we can do is go into the fitness app. This was formerly known as the activity uh, app. Uh, so we can just go into it. And now you can see you have all these different options. So we have the outdoor walk, outdoor run, and there has been some new uh, features added. So you can see that there's some new uh, high intensity training. Uh, there's also been some new uh, dance goals that you can add. Uh, so this is just uh, implementing some new great features in order to make the Apple Watch a part of your daily lifestyle and make it more convenient to exercise now the core training is new and also the functional strength and the dance and you can just add a workout as well. So that is really good that the fitness app uh, has been uh, improved and there's going to be some more uh, new features that you can go ahead and add into the Apple Watch uh, by dancing, functional strength and with the core. Now we can take a look at the maps. Now taking a look at the maps, we do have the cycling addition to maps, uh, so that's a new feature. So we can get cycling directions and uh, it will tell you the particular elevation, whether there's stairs or some other congestion in the traffic that you have to avoid. Uh, so the cycling hasn't been enabled yet. And just to be able to calculate your cycling that you need to do. Uh, so there's no cycling uh, options that are available yet, but it does say cycling if you take a deep look into it. Uh, so uh, that is what it allows you to do so far. Now, if we go into the settings app and then we go into hand washing, you can see that we could set a timer for hand washing. Uh, so Apple can detect when you're washing your hands and it will start a 20 second timer. Uh, so you can go ahead and enable it. You can also add some haptics as well. Uh, so this is really interesting. Apple, once again, will use machine learning and attract the movements of the Apple Watch to tell you about your hand washing. So here we can do a demo. So now we can go ahead and try and demo the new hand washing feature on the Apple Watch. So I can just go straight on into uh, settings and then we can go into the hand washing uh, under settings. So you can just once again go to hand washing and then the timer and then just the haptic. So I'm going to go ahead and try and show you that the hand washing actually does work. So we can see it is showing. And now you can see it's just showing the timer and it says getting close. And now it says that uh, since I didn't fully wash my hands for 20 seconds, it cannot uh, kill the germs uh, until I wash it for 20 seconds. And now I can hear it chiming again. And there we go. So the timer was working and it said I got up to eight seconds. It's somewhat responsive and somewhat not. So I can see that uh, the Apple Watch did try and do its job and now it can detect that uh, there's no water on it anymore. Uh, so you can see that there is some water on the Apple Watch and then that kind of affects it. So that's how it kind of knows, obviously. Uh, so that is what it used. It uses the machine learning models plus uh, any water detection. And it has the audio, of course, to hear if the uh, water is being played. So then it will automatically set
set to the timer and you have the haptics as well. So it's very unique in that way. So thank you for watching this video on Apple Watch OS 7. Hopefully you thoroughly enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to smash the like button, smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below of what you think of Watch OS 7. Now, I thought there's a lot of great features added to Watch OS 7 to make it more usable. And it makes me even more excited for the Watch Series 6 that will be coming in the fall. And I'm sure Apple will add a lot more features. So this is just the tip of the iceberg and there's more great features to come to the Apple Watch. So once again, be sure to comment down below what you think about it. Be sure to follow me on all these social media platforms that include Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. My username there is AppleCritics. And be sure to subscribe for more great content. And thanks for watching.